Welcome to the very first video of DinMD's EKG series. I'm really excited about beginning this series for you guys and hope that you find it very useful. As always, if you have any suggestion, please put it in the comment section below. To fully understand and correctly read an electrocardiogram, you need to master the anatomy and physiology of the heart. That's why on this video we're going to talk about the anatomy of the heart's conduction system that, as you know, is made up of nervous tissue, right? Wrong! Keep watching to learn more. Welcome to a brand new class on DeanMD, where you can learn everything related about the basic sciences of medical knowledge and apply it to patient care in the future or right now. As you know, the heart functions as a pump in order to deliver blood to every tissue of the body. But as a pump, it requires controls to tell it when to pump and how fast to do it. That is the function of the conduction system. So, what is the conduction system? It's a network of specialized tissue within the heart that is able to generate an electrical impulse, which causes the heart muscle to contract. This impulse generating tissue is actually made up of modified cardiac cells that include nodal cells, transitional cells, and Purkinje cardiomyocytes. These cells are organized in specific structures that form a type of network that originates at the right atrium and travels down into the ventricles, distributing to every last cardiac muscle cell, which are called cardiac myocytes. These structures are the sinoatrial node, the so-called internodal pathways, the atrioventricular node, the atrioventricular bundle, also called the bundle of His, and finally the Purkinje network. Picture all these structures as being part of the military. They have levels of command, meaning that the one with the highest level is in charge. And if that person is killed in action, then the next in the chain of command takes over. The conduction system works the same way. The general is the sinoatrial node, also known as the pacemaker of the heart, which means that is the one that determines the heart rate, telling everybody else how fast to beat. The next in command is the coronal, the atrioventricular node. Then we have the captain, in this case the bundle of his, and finally the lieutenant, the Purkinje network. If one of these structures fails, the next one in chain takes over and becomes the pacemaker. However, as you go down the chain of command, the heart rate becomes lower and unstable. We're going to talk about each one of these structures. The sinoatrial node has a crescent shape and is located between the junction of the superior vena cava and the right atrium. It does not occupy the full thickness of the atrial wall and is actually located in the subepicardium within the terminal groove. Its location is marked by the sinoatrial nodal branch, derived from the right coronary artery or the circumflex arteries. This node was discovered more than 100 years ago by Sir Arthur Keith, who worked with medical student Martin Flack on hearts of small mammals such as moles, and discovered what they describe as a wonderful structure in the right auricle. That's why this node is also called the node of Keith Flack. You may remember seeing this node in many textbooks, like this. But did you know that this depiction is completely wrong? Yes, it's an oversimplification of the true structure of the sinoatrial node. A review of the anatomy and physiology of this node conducted by Oliver Monfredi and collaborators explains that molecular markers to map the extent of the node have shown that the pacemaker tissue is more spread in the right atrium than previously appreciated. The node is not completely encapsulated forming a compact structure, but rather it has multiple radiations of nodal tissue that extend like fingers and mix with normal myocardial cells. The node is mainly composed by nodal cells that are the ones in charge of generating the electrical impulse. These nodal cells are surrounded by a paranodal area located along the crista terminalis and can even extend into the inferior vena cava. This area has transitional cells that may also play a role in pacemaking. So rather than thinking about the SA node as a single structure, think of it as a seed that is sprouting roots. The tissue of the SA node literally starts to mix with the paranodal area and with the regular cardiac myocytes, sometimes even extending down the crista terminalis and having a cigar shape. These variations in shape and extension of the SA node is clinically important because of the location of the pacemaker site, meaning the specific area in all the SA node that activates to generate the impulse. Think about it, if the SA node is really large, it can have an activation area located closest to the inferior vena cava than to the superior vena cava, as most nodes do. This pacemaker shift can be responsible for variations in the P wave that are often seen in EKG. 
this can also explain the wandering pacemaker phenomenon, which occurs when the pacemaker site changes between the SA node, atrium, and the atrioventricular node. This shift can happen easily if we think of the SA node as we have described, as an heterogeneous structure that mixes with the surrounding tissue and can have a large extension. However, if you think about the SA node as most anatomy textbooks draw it, then it means that the node is homogeneous and encapsulated, which makes this wandering phenomenon unlikely. The internodal pathways were supposed to be real pathways that connected the sinoatrial and atrioventricular nodes. However, there is no evidence that such tracks really exist within the atrial walls, as the ones in the ventricle that are real insulated tracts. Actually, the impulse generated in the SA node travels rapidly through the atrium without the need of insulated tracks in a downwards direction through the terminal crest and the margins of the fossa ovalis to reach the AV node. For the impulse to reach the left atrium, it travels through a broad band of cardiac muscle called the interatrial tract, also known as the backman's bundle. The third structure is the atrioventricular node, also known as the node of Tawara. It is an oblique structure located within the interatrial septum and penetrating the membranous portion of the interventricular septum. More specifically, it's located in the center of an area known as the Triangle of Koch. Its limits are the attachment of the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve inferiorly, the ostium of the coronary sinus basally, and the tendon of Todaro superiorly. This tendon is a continuation of the inferior vena cava valve with the valve of the coronary sinus. Just like the SA node, this node is also made of nodal and transitional cells. An important characteristic is that these cells are difficult to activate, which results in a delay in the propagation of the electrical stimulus. We'll talk more about this delay when we discuss the heart's physiology. For the atrioventricular node to communicate with the ventricles, it transforms into the atrioventricular bundle, also known as the bundle of His, and penetrates through the heart's fibrous skeleton in an area known as the right fibrous trigone. Finally, the arterial supply comes from a vessel that originates from the dominant coronary artery, usually the right, in an area known as the cardiac crux, which is the place where the coronary sulcus and the posterior interventricular sulcus meet. The bundle of his is the continuation of the AV node. Once it passes through the right fibrous trigone and enters the interventricular septum, it branches into a right bundle branch and the left bundle branch. The area where this bundle branches is the union of the membranous and muscular components of the interventricular septum. Think of it as a sandwich, where the branching portion is covered superiorly by the membranous portion and inferiorly by the muscular portion of the interventricular septum. The right bundle branch, also known as cross textrum, is a narrow group of fascicles that travels subendocardially towards the apex of the right ventricle. Then it enters the septomarginal trabecula, which is literally like a bridge made of muscle. This helps it reach the anterior papillary muscle, and from here it divides into smaller subendocardial fascicles to distribute to all the walls of the right ventricle. The left bundle branch, also known as cross sinistrum, forms a flattened fascicle that travels subendocardially down the left ventricle septal surface and trifurcates into an anterior, posterior, and septal divisions that create smaller subendocardial branches that surround the papillary muscles and apex and then are distributed to all the walls of the left ventricle. This distribution of the fascicles is important to remember, because as you can tell, the first thing to receive branches in both ventricles are the papillary muscles, therefore they are the ones that contract first, closing the bulbs. The next thing would be a wave of contraction that travels from the apex of the ventricle to the outflow tracts. The smaller branches and divisions that are in direct contact with the myocardium are known as the Purkinje network which is located in the subendocardium. Its location is the reason why the heart's muscular excitation proceeds from endocardium to epicardium. So remember, all these structures form part of the heart's conduction system. The electrical impulse is originated in the SA node and then travels down in order, which causes the atria to contract first and the ventricles to contract last, creating a coordinated and efficient blood pumping system. And that's it for this video. Next video we're going to talk about the heart's vascular supply. Why? Because it's important to have this knowledge in order to understand the myocardial infarction section of this new series. 
If you would like to read more about the topics discussed in this video, I'll put my reference down below in the description. Also, if you have any questions, please don't doubt to write it in the comment section. Before you do, make sure that your question wasn't asked already. If it has, please give that question a like and the three questions with the most likes will be answered in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching. And remember, it's always for our patients. If you like this video and the content I make, please don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. With your help, I'm sure we can get free medical content to every corner of this world.